Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Substance live stream. My name is Wes, and I will be your host. Today, we have with us Nicholas, our head of content creation on Substance Source, Pauline, who is a texture artist working with the Source team, as well as Maximilian, who is also working with the Source team as a technical artist. Pauline and Max produce amazing work, and it's awesome to get an insight into their expertise and workflows. And we also have Maureen from our marketing team, who will be monitoring the chat. Our main man, Vincent, is off today. Today, we'll be looking at procedural material creation for fashion design with substance. But before we get started, I want to give you an update on our recent source release. So we recently, we recently released the 2021 collection dedicated to fashion design, now available on Substance Source. These 100 plus new assets complement the palette of 400 digital fabrics already available in the online library. Made up of more than 90 procedural fabrics and 20 print execution decals, this selection multiplies the creative possibilities tenfold. Use the collection in V-Stitcher or Clo to generate incredible variety with the substance source materials for fashion and apparel. Now, I would like to introduce Nicholas, who will go in depth on why we decided to create this collection for the fashion industry. Nico, can you start your screen share and take it away when you're ready? Hi, <clears throat> thanks. Thank you, Wes. Can you can you all see my screen? All right, just checking here to see if it's coming in yet. Uh, yeah, there we go. It's all good, Nicholas. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, and hello, everybody. Um, today, I would like to um, talk a bit more about how we created the latest collection dedicated to fashion industry for Substance Source, and more specifically, how digital materials can enable new workflows and perhaps even optimize the way we design and build fabrics and uh, fashion items moving forward. So first I'm going to introduce briefly myself. Um, my name is Nicholas and I'm head of content for 3D and immersive at Adobe. Um, I did the creation of content for Substance Source, our online library of um, ready to use PBR materials. Um, <clears throat> and to create this collection, we had to step into the shoes of designers researching materials and technology, trying to understand um, together with the team of experts how we can translate them into the digital world and how we can innovate in a way we might make things or build things better. Um, and more generally, what's inspiring and what's curious to designers, not only into the world of fashion, because that's what's fueling our creativity. And we built um, uh, this collection exactly um, uh, in this way. <clears throat> um, and we believe um, that digital materials can help designers and artists to be more efficient in their work and more creative. Um, we wanted to provide content, um, ready to use content to follow the following workflows. First, design fabrics in digital and how to get fabrics to look photorealistic. Secondly, um, designing items, garments, and um, this is to add all the necessary detail to a piece of, uh, of clothes or an accessory in a realistic way in order to make it a final product. And finally, combining both a hundred more times and generate the various um, combination of outfits, colors and details that compose the complete um, product collection. And with this, we aim to um, help designers to create photorealistic visualization of outfit faster and more easily which can be handy when um, you need to populate an e-commerce platform with lots of images. But even beyond making the design process shorter by giving stylists more creative freedom to test design in digital, express the design intention more accurately and consequently limit the numbers of prototype and at the end possibly save time and money. So what's new with this um, uh, digital fabric textures, um, uh, this is not a new concept, um, and this is not even the, the first collection on Substance Source. Um, and many of you are probably um, familiar with the scan techniques. What is different with this collection is that it's fully procedural. And for those who know, do, do not know the terms, procedural assets are textures that were computer generated completely using algorithm. And this digital recipe, if you will, have the benefit of being first lightweight, tileable, and by definition, totally parametric, 
meaning that changing a parameter will create a different and unique visual result. And that's where it becomes interesting. As you can see um, in this video, each fabric has act, act as a generator capable to create an infinity of unique variations. And in this case, the fabric materials come with predefined parameters, allowing you to customize the colors, glossiness, and even the structure of the fabrics. In one word, a procedural material is, a, is, it, is its own library of possible variation. Now, let's dive into how we categorize the collection. And of course, we um, um, uh, model ourselves um, with the existing families of how textures are made, grouping together these different types of woven structures. Like here, you can see examples of canvas and twills and denims and many other structures. Um, in, this, in this category, you'll find more than 40 um, most common woven uh, fabrics. All the way to uh, fabrics that are composed of multicolored yarn woven into iconic patterns such as tartan or vichy. Um, here you can control selectively the colors of the warp and weft um, uh, threads and yarns and design complex color, um, color harmonies. And we couldn't get away with this without talking about knits, of course. And um, we've been working on knit structures such as jersey, interlock, and many of other uh, fabrics where you have the control over the size and the structure and the thickness of the yarn to design your very own um, uh, textiles. But also we worked on printing textiles where we combine the basic structure with the different attributes of the printing patterns, giving access to parameters that give you the possibility to modify every aspect of the print, such as the colors and glossiness, but also the thickness of the prints and the different combination with um, the fabrics below, giving an endless amount of possibilities. And um, moving even further in testing more complex structures, combining weave and embroideries to more exotic combinations of pearls and stitches, showcase how far you can go with procedural techniques uh, uh, going beyond. And so to summarize, with the 90 fabrics collection split into these four categories, we aim to cover a more than 50% of the standard fabrics that um, fashion designer use daily as their professional work. But in order to create those recipes I was mentioning before, um, we model our approach on actual ma manufacturing diagram, understanding the wealth of knowledge from the factory floors to understand how things are made in real life, how loom we fabric in the different knittings and weaving techniques we try to mimic then in digital. We created the complex intertwining of yarns to which we added the details, the randomness and the little effects um, that, and perhaps sometimes the defects that makes the fabrics look real and believable. But you'll see more in an instant with uh, Pauline's demo. And this is just a, a starting point because you can see the different structures here of the woven and the knitted structures recreated fully in digital, because all these structures are available on Substance Source. And the SBS file contains the full graph of the fabric structure. So if you happen not to find a fabric you seek in this current collection, you can make it from an existing graph, perhaps move even further in building your digital IP, creating your own lineup of custom weaves even add your specific set of constraints using Substance Designer. And of course, Pauline will come back on that in a, in a, in a few moments. But the result is, is, is a powerful combination of photorealism and creative freedom. The ability to test freely as many design options as you need in a realistic way, and down to the yarn level if needs be. Um, here's an example of the few variation in a single procedural asset, but the numbers that you can generate is obviously um, uh, endless. Consider the impact that it may have on the design process itself and the, and the manufacturing cycles moving forward. They provide the freedom to explore more colors, more patterns in such a way that design intention are better understood. Decision 
educated and documented, leading to fewer prototypes fabricated and perhaps, and perhaps le less samples produced. And being able to generate the entire color range of a fabric in a few clicks and more if needed is, can be very handy if you must generate thousands of images to feed an e-commerce library or an online uh, configurator. And just think about the amount of resources and time required to do so if you had to scan every single one fabric before starting your work. And now back to you, Wes. Thank you, Nicholas. You can go ahead and stop sharing your screen. Uh, that was an awesome presentation. Now we're going to switch over to Pauline. She's gonna walk us through an actual live demo of a material and substance designer. Pauline, please go ahead and start your screen share and take it away when you're ready. Hello. Okay, there we go, Pauline. I think you were muted. Oh, sorry. You, no, it's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, you're good now. Oh, we yeah, can I'm hear back. you. So yeah. hi, I'm Pauline. Um, um, I'm part of the Sixton Source team. Um, we're going to take a look at those three materials here. Um, I'm going to show you how they were made directly inside Substance Designer. Um, but before that, the first thing we have to focus on are the references because every time you start working on a material that is uh, re realistic looking you have to really take uh, take care of the, the final look of it so usually the first thing I do is look for um, references uh, I tr try to have some samples because I find it easier when you have real samples directly in your hand. And sometimes you have to uh, try it for yourself. In that case, it was for knitting. And I find it easier when I try it out just to see how the thread works and how basically it's supposed to look like in the end. So as you can see, part time uh, in three, I look a lot for references, I try it out a bit. And then the time I spend on Substance Designer is way uh, smaller because I think I better understand the, the material in the first place. So if we now take a look uh, at the, the materials in Substance Designer, here we have the, the stitch, the knitted one. And what you have to understand working with knitted uh, fabrics is that you're basically working with a very long piece of yarn and you're just making knots in it. So that way I just simply reproduce the best that I could <laughs> the two kinds of knots you can find in a knitting pattern. Uh, so you have that one here that is basically just a uh, going up and down <laughs> around each other is basically a knot and that one that looks more like a braid and once you have those two materials you just have to uh, put combine them together and using here a tile generator you can easily create that pattern right here and it is the the base of your material uh, on top of that, you can see you have bigger uh, braids on top of it, and those are created using exactly the same shape. And as you can see, the graph itself is fairly simple, because when once you understand the the basic shape and like how it works, basically, it goes way faster to uh, to produce those kinds of materials, and. If you go through the library, um, the substance source, uh, different knitted materials, you'll probably see that most of them are created on the same base because it's fairly always the same kind of techniques that are used to, to create those materials in real life. Um, and so that way we have those big braids and those ones underneath and you just have to blend them together and you get that pattern 
fairly easily using uh, some tiles gener tile generators and the uh, and the blend mode node. So that's how you create basically uh, that kind of pattern. Uh, Pauline, um, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, I was wondering, could you zoom into the to the first part of your graph so that we could see that basic shape, like like when you the the very beginning? How did you make that shape? It's it's super intricate. It looks like, but it look it seems simple once you show the shape. Well, it is kind of simple. The um, the thing is that the not fibers already exist in Substance Designer, and I use it as a base <clears throat> for pretty much all the threads um, that I have to create. Uh, in every materials, and the trick is is to since um, yarn uh, wool is usually made of little tiny uh, threads that are swirled together. Um, I fake that effect using an anisotropic noise here, and as you can see, I just like rotate it to be around the same direction as the the fibers and just multiply it on top that way you have a fake tiny threads effect <clears throat> um, and then to create shapes it's fairly like here is just a simple swirl so it creates an s and when you mirror it it makes half of a braid basically so you can get that pattern fairly, yeah, fairly easily here. And um, yeah, as I said, the, um, pretty much all the, uh, the needed pattern works the same way. So you'll find those kind of tunics so the braids and the knots, uh, you'll find them a lot in those materials. And you just have to find a way to uh, get them work together nicely. And since, you're only working with one thread in that case. Um, you basically have parameters for the color, of course, but also the metallic and roughness for that thread um, to change the look of the final material. Um, in the case of woven material, most of the time, just gonna go there, yeah. Most of the time you're using two threads one going vertically and one going horizontally and they're woven because they create waves basically so uh, they're just like going up and down each other and they uh, create that kind of pattern right here what is what is interesting in that case is not really the the pattern itself because it's fairly basic uh, if we take a look at the eight map right here you can see it's basically uh, they're just going, they're just crossing and crossing each other basically. Um, but the the nice the nice thing that I tried to work a bit more on those ones was to break the regularity because when you create uh, those kind of fits, so as you can see here, it's exactly the same method. You use the fiber and the anisot uh, anisotropic noise on top of it just to create uh, that fibery effect. But once you plug it in a tile generator, as you can see, it's fairly simple and regular. You can play a bit with the parameters of those nodes. So they can have different directions and colors. So you can mess around a bit with it already. But what was really interesting, and I discovered that node, like a few months ago, that was a big discovery, is that using a multi-directional work and a noise, you can actually recreate the, you know, those parts with the threads split. Uh, you can do that fairly easily. So as you can see, here is uh, my material. So it's uh, just my two tires in the generators to have all the threads and there's only one uh, one of each. Once you plug it uh, in the multi-directional warp here, it creates, as you can see, those tiny things where it doubles the fiber and it, it breaks the regularity. So on those kind of materials, when you have to create um, a big surface 
uh, using always the same thread at the beginning, it's way easier to uh, put it in place in the you know, using either type generators or whatever, or just a transform node. Uh, and then once you have the good scale, because we try to create, usually in scan, you can create like 10 by 10 centimeters texture. And it's really, I mean, on, on everyday clothing, you can see the 10 by 10 fairly easily. You can see it repeat. So the point of creating procedural texture was to create it bigger. That way you have more variation and it's easier to, uh, to texture like a whole coat forever, uh, for example. And you can, you can do it fairly easily just by making it at the good scale and then breaking it, breaking it up with some noise and uh, some warps. Pauline, could you zoom yeah. into the 3D view just a little closer so we could see that detail? Awesome. And then with that non-directional uh, warp you used, what, what is that noise that you have feeding into that? Oh, it's a basic Gaussian noise. Oh, wow. Um, that's that's awesome technique. It's just, cool. Um, you can play around with the, the scale. And the, the thing you need to, if you want to try it out, the only thing uh, you need to know is to put the multi-directional warp um, in the max mode. Otherwise, it creates some kind of gray scales around it. The max uh, goes, you, you can see two threads. The mean uh, effect uh, right there is like, it, uh, it's, it makes it thinner, I think is that. Uh, and the chain makes some wiggly stuff. It's really fun too. You should try it out. But the max uh, effect does that. It just doubles and you can see uh, uh, two or more threads. Uh, what's funny to do too is to chain them up. And that way you can like, if you want to work on like a rope, um, a rope at the end that is going apart, you can do that a few times behind each other and it works and it splits the, the fiber into every time you do that. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm right. I'm writing this down. Yeah. I'm like, that's so cool. <laughs> this is great. Very cool. <clears throat> so yeah, that's pretty much it for the base materials and we have quite a few of them. So uh, they're pretty much all built the same way. And the ones, I must admit, I had the most fun working on were the embroideries because it's kind of my thing. I like it. So yeah. uh, if we take a look now at the, the Japanese peacock one, um, that one was fairly um, easy in a sense that the, the whole material was um, uh, a simple idea. The thing was, I just wanted to be able to create any pattern, any complex pattern, uh, either using uh, a bitmap that I could import or using an SVG node like I did there. Um, and let's put it nicely. Um, and so I needed the material so I can just plug my uh, bitmap in there or my, or my pattern in there and it creates the embroidery for me. Uh, and once you did that, it was fairly easy to change it up and add some things on it. So if we take a look at how the material itself works, um, you have here the same basics thread. Um, at the beginning, there's a bit of transformation and then I uh, I plugged it into a tile generator. That way I could create that kind of pattern where, where there's a lot of threads going fairly in the same way. Um, and I have like that a whole picture just with threads everywhere. That way I could easily uh, change the direction and use it uh, with their, so the embroidery is here. And as you can see, I use here a uh, safe transform grayscale just to uh, orient it um, the way I want, basically. And I use uh, a mask right here to blend it over, um, basically multiply over it. Uh, then using a level just to uh, sharpen the edges 
uh, and you just have to combine like that all the, the threads together. So as you can see here, I have three of them. It's always the same pattern here and they all blend it together at the end. Um, and that creates, as you can see, mask. If you put a level and you contrast it a lot at the end, it creates something like that. And that is basically your mask for everything from color, roughness, uh, metallic and the anisotropic direction too. Um, so that way you, you create only one mask and you can uh, modify pretty much anything behind it. Um, you also have uh, those holes, yeah. Um, it just adds a little detail. If you look at the, the outline, you can see tiny tension holes. That, that happens a lot on embroideries, I mean, around it at least. Um, so they were yeah, created that way too. It's basically a lot of parabolic shapes that are um, uh, splattered everywhere. Um, and using a non-uniform blur, you get uh, seeing the inside it stays pretty much the same and it it blurs a lot more uh, on the outside. That way, uh, when you use then that's the shape. Uh, that's my pattern totally flat. You can subtract it. And as you can see, it creates those, those tiny uh, tension points around everywhere. Oh, and that's once, awesome. you, <laughs> once you invert yeah. it, you get it and you just put it on multiply over the rest, basically. Um, and it creates those tiny things. What I usually do, uh, it's, oh, it's the case here. I try to have uh, a normal map for everything and I, I um, duplicate it just for the folds because I, I like seeing them and it's usually very subtle. So I, I tend to duplicate it. As you can see, there's only here uh, the tiny step for the embroidery and the folds around it. And you can just combine them together using the normal combine. And you see a bit better. Here is the, the original version and here's the combined one. It creates a bit more depth uh, around the pattern. So yeah. Uh, and once that's done, uh, that was the, the hard part. <laughs> now the fun part is just to create any pattern and that way um, you can change a lot of things. The way I thought about it was uh, using grayscale because it's easier using uh, an Instagram select, as you can see here. It's the beginning of all the, the mask that I would create it after. So I needed to create a pattern with only three uh, gray scales, basically. Um, and that way you could uh, fairly easily uh, get the, the pattern at the end using the, the Instagram select. Um, in some cases, it's easier to uh, create complex patterns uh, using either uh, another software and drawing it using a bitmap. You can also uh, create SVG, uh, SVGs directly inside designer. Um, and that way you can, as you can see here, the, the body is an SVG node, but for the feathers, I thought, I thought about drawing them all, but then uh, it was like, it's gonna be really, really time consuming. So I'd rather draw one. So that's what I did there. I drew one and then using uh, a tile sampler, you can, you can get, the whole tail in one go, and I don't have to draw them all. It would have been too tedious to do that, and I, I honestly didn't have time. <laughs> so uh, that way you can combine the two of them. So here I have the, the straight version of the, the feathers, just using the sword to give it the S shapes, just so it looks a bit better, a little, a little bit better, sorry. Um, and then you 
you can simply combine them all, uh, combine the two of them together, always using, as you can see, those three uh, gray scales. So I have a uh, full white, a uh, grayish, uh, lighter gray, a uh, mid gray, and black. And of course, you can add as many gray scales as you want. You just have to then duplicate that part right here and use the histogram select, just move it around to get the good grayscale you want to you wanna pick up. And it's going to then go and modify um, the base color, the roughness, and add, then add everything the way you want. So if there, for example, I want to add something right there, and I will draw it in white, you'll see there, so I'll end up with a golden embroidery. Uh, let's throw. Yeah, you can get tiny stuff. It takes some play, <laughs> some time. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you can get like tiny stuff like that on the side. And that way you can easily Try, try out and change colors if needed, change the, the whole material if needed, and you can uh, just go ahead and be creative. And if you don't like it, you just take it off and that's that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, the, the whole um, embroidery is worked pretty much that way, uh, always using the grayscale uh, in input. Um, and um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Wow, thank you, Pauline. That was that was incredible. I mean, that was awesome to get an insight into your workflow here in Designer. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to uh, hit you up offline to ask you for these substance source files afterwards. <laughs> sure. uh, but but uh, that's a good point though, because uh, since these are on substance source, the the actual SBS file. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, Nicholas. But that SBS file is available as well for people to download and check out in Designer. Uh, so this that's really great. Yeah, uh, Pauline, seriously, these were amazing techniques. That was really cool. Um, before you actually stop sharing your screen, uh, I mm -hmm. want to take a small break right now just to address a few questions in the chat. And Pauline, I have several here that are probably uh, geared towards you. And mm -hmm. so let's just keep your screen share going in case you need to reference anything. Sure, um, okay. But but uh, let's see here. Let me ask a few of these. So. Um, uh, one question is, is there a way to have pattern spacing change polygon stretching like a row, like a row of buttons? Like a row of buttons. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm following this one. Uh, let's see, is there a way to have a pattern spacing change? Um, I, I, I guess it means like, like if you had like a row of buttons, is it possible to, to I oh. guess, have... I think I, I understand. Um, oh. And honestly, if there is a way to do that, I would love to know. <laughs> because oh. you, I, I try to do that with um, uh, beads most of the time. I try to have a line of beads. And the only way I could do that was either use the, using um, a splatter circular, circular um, and trying to create some half shapes and put it together to get like nice uh, things. But other than that, there's a lot of uh, great knots that you can get pretty much anywhere. Um, the, the Substance community is pretty great about it because they share a lot of stuff. So I'm pretty sure you can find someone who tried it out already, but I don't have any tips for it right now, honestly. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Uh, so here's another one. Uh, what if I uh, want to create a custom embroidery fabric? Is Substance Designer the only software that they could use? What about Painter? Uh, they just haven't really gotten into Designer. So is is this pretty much Designer? I mean, have you ever tried doing any work like this in Painter? Well, I tried, but it's basically the same thing as here. Uh, by that, I mean, I usually create a material that are just threads. Uh, uh, you can basically stop at that face right here and just using the material from that. Uh, I then would put it into painter and paint some uh, yeah some um, some mask around it 
I mean, to create some, yeah, some masking of that material, but I, I personally prefer designer because I feel like I have more, I can do more what I want with the material than, than it's only personal, but like I, I'd rather do it that way. Uh, yeah. I find it easier. Yeah, yeah I, I would agree with that too. And that's one thing I always try to recommend to people is is, is designers definitely not as, as daunting or scary as it looks. Yeah, it's, it's node-based, not- but uh, the nodes are really more art-oriented nodes. Uh, yeah, there's functions in math, but I mean, for the most part, the nodes you see are things like levels and transform and blend. And it's more like digital compositing except for textures, yeah. you know? Exactly. So it's, uh, yeah, I highly recommend. Don't let it scare you. Jump in and give it a shot. Um, so, so Pauline, uh, there was a small clarification on that last question I asked, uh, the one about the, the row of buttons. It was saying row without distorting. So I guess maybe creating a row of patterns without them distorting. I don't know if that, that rings any, it helps at all, but uh, yeah, well, unfortunately, I'm sorry. I'm not really sure on that question myself. No, it's okay. I, but I think that if it's, a distortion it's mainly because of your UVs I don't know it really depends on the case honestly um so uh yeah I honestly I don't know oh that's okay that's okay <laughs> uh okay here's another question is it possible to load a UV map and create a pattern from this specific map I do that a lot. Yeah, actually, there's a lot of materials that I don't share because they only uh, go from the mesh that I put it on. So I would love to share a lot of all uh, of my materials, but a lot of time it wouldn't work other than on that mesh. Um, and usually the way it goes uh, is you can, in the 2D view, uh, go into scene right there and display UVs in 2D view. And that way, uh, here on the the plane, that's the the plane uh, from the software. You can see they're right there, uh, and that way, if you're organized enough to put it uh, nicely, uh, I'd say uh, you can uh, see them directly in the two D view. Uh, on some cases, I like to uh, get a UV snapshot directly from usually Maya um, and try to do some basic outlines directly inside either Photoshop or Illustrator. Um, but uh, yeah, you can you can basically create it directly there. You just have to, you'll, you just won't have the whole uh, tiling it both ways uh, uh, material. That's pretty much it. You can do whatever you want, basically. <laughs> it's up to you. Oh yeah, and then also we have the uh, maybe I'm I'm saying this wrong, but we also have the uh, the bake where you can bake UV to SVG shell. Yeah, exactly. So there, yeah. there's that option as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, a few few questions coming in. We can also hit some of these up <laughs> at the end. Uh, let Let's just hit one more real quick. Uh, so uh, let's see here. Uh, just uh, just uh, let's see. This one says just for a thought. How do you visually represent how uh, a fabric stretches. I think you kind of hit a little bit on that with the directional blur and how you were giving those tension points. Yeah, that, that uh, and it really depends on the material itself. That's why I said in the beginning, I try to have a tiny sample next to me every time I work on fabric, just to be able to stretch it myself and see, okay, the, so that point is actually going there. And it's just easier for me to get it directly. Um, and the way to replace, uh, to replicate it, is usually always the same. It's usually like uh, either using warps or directional warps. Uh, um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. The warp is really useful to stretch uh, uh, things uh, in one way or another. Um, Discovering that warps can go in negative was a big thing for me because you can like squish a lot of things. You can like uh, warp and so they, they squash more, uh, but you can squish them too and it creates like really nice stuff uh, around threads uh, for the, uh, basically every stitching, it's really useful. Okay, awesome, awesome. 
Um, okay, thank you, Pauline, for taking a moment for those questions, and we can always circle back near the end of the stream, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and start switching gears a bit, so Pauline, you can go ahead and stop your screen share, and uh, we're going to start to transition, so of, of course, the fashion industry is not uh, only about creating textiles, but it also has a lot to do with clothing, uh, and, and jump back to uh, Nico, who's going to talk a little bit more about this. So uh, Nicholas, can you go ahead and uh, start your screen share and you can take it away when you're ready. And uh, actually, while you're preparing that, I do have another question, Nicholas, that I think you could answer. Uh, so let's hit that really quick. So this one says, um, I've seen a previous post on the kind of do it yourself scanning fabric materials and getting them into substance. Uh, what's the difference between doing it that way versus procedural? I think there's there's no um, um, there's no much difference in terms of, of processes. Just uh, getting the right technique for the right purpose. Um, um, uh, scanning will enable you to have um, the exact accurate um, uh, replica of the of an existing sample. And that's that's very very um, important in certain cases. Um, uh, the procedural way um, will give you a lot more control and creative freedom into making change. To that very specific fabric. So um, things like um, like Pauline were mentioning before is to um, uh, is to perhaps warp a little bit or deform the fabrics in a, in a certain way. That's something that you can do with procedural technique that you can't with um, uh, with a scan unless you um, you change drastically the, the the basic maps that you got from the from the scanning technique. I don't know if I'm uh, the question correctly. Yes, th thanks, Nicholas. Uh, yeah, so uh, go ahead uh, with the next part of your presentation. Thank you for taking uh, time for that. No problem. Um, um, so, so if you see my screen, then thank you very much, Wes. And, uh, and so as you were mentioning, the second part is very much about um, uh, the finality of the, of, of, of the thing. It's just converging fabrics and shape together into the final piece of uh, of material, of clothes, or, or garments, or of accessory, which is which is the the, the finality of uh, of the thing, and, and and adding all those extra details um, uh, that makes it a unique uh, design, and um, and realistic in the way that uh, all the details are coming together, um, and so that these are the, the the pockets, the seams, and the and the different um, broderies and logos that you find on 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 on, on clothes. Um, um, and to visualize complex details such as blazon and, and these logos in a realistic way can require a lot of resources that designers and stylists don't often have the luxury to spend. So um, the goal in a way of, of, of this part of the collection is to remove this complexity by creating content that would in a way do it for you. And so um, uh, there was a question before um, uh, splitting materials and embroidery to, um, into two different parts. Um, this is basic, basically what we um, what we intended to do. And so, sorry, do you see the next slide? Okay. Seems that I have a little bit lag uh, in changing the slide here. Um, and, and so basically, that's what we um, that's what we did um, with procedural decals, which is basically um, uh, our materials that reproduce the visual attributes of specific techniques that are designed to be applied locally on garments. And so we um, uh, splitted these elements into categories where we explore the main technologies to create details on, uh, on, on clothes such as prints, um, like silk print, transfer, and, and, and this time very literally digital printing um, of, of artworks, of fabrics, and the different effects this would have onto uh, the surface of the materials and the, and the textiles, to embroideries, um, uh, top stitching on top of, uh, of, uh, of fabrics to create blasons and logos, and, uh, and simply write down your initials on the, on, on the, on the shirt, to, um, to embossing um, and, uh, and having control over the thickness and the force of, and, and possibly the, 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 the smoothness of the, the, the the artwork being waffled into into the, fa the the fabrics to to all these details that makes it a lot more realistic, like trims and seams and stitch, um, uh, even labels that you need to add to um, to um, add this extra information, um, making the thing more believable in a way. Um, and so we design tools that are 
simple to use, just importing a 2D artworks created using any 2D program into the substance materials, and it will be transformed into, um, into um, the desired print execution. And here's an example of a close-up that we um, created with uh, the Degas for flat embroidery, where the substance logo is basically transformed and you um, have a, a, an addition of this, um, uh, of this outline, which we, you can control specifically adding the, the small effects that would be um, a lot of resource hungry to, to actually create uh, using 2D techniques. And because it's also um, uh, completely procedural, you have control over the design of, of, of the effects. So changing, changing the color of it is, is, is not of a problem or even changing the thickness of the sound client to, to just fit whatever um, design intention you are looking for. Um, and, and, you know, in a, in a video, um, um, this is a little bit more obvious to just drag and dropping the, um, the elements on your model and position it and scale it and, uh, and then customize it and works the same way whether it's an embroidery or a simple sticker. Um, you have the possibility to add extra level of details that will help to make the item identical to um, the final real product. Um, and it's a great playground too. Um, it's in a way an, an ultimate test, test bench um, to scale every element to the right size, shape, and colors before moving to production, or even validate that um, the artworks you're using is, is fit to, to, this, uh, to, the, to this technique. Um, <clears throat> and, and, and moving forward, you can test many other things. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and what it, what's also very interesting is that these elements can be combined to each other to build more complex artwork. And so for instance, here, this example is mixing flat embroidery with more fluffy ones, which have uh, the capability to incorporate patterns and change colors to um, even glittery um, 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 embroideries and, and many more if you, if you dig in substance tools. But um, better show than tell, right? And, um, and then I'm gonna hand out the mic to, uh, to Maximilian, who has been uh, working on designing the, the decals. Um, and, um, and has produced these visual, visuals and, uh, and will uh, basically drive you through um, how to use the decals from the collection. So um, Max, it's your turn and uh, can you share your screen? And take over when you're ready. Um, can you see my screen? Yeah, yes. that looks great, Max. Okay, perfect. So hi, um, I'm Maximilian. I'm a technical artist here uh, for the Substance Source team. And I will just uh, show you uh, some of the decal that we created uh, for, uh, for Substance Source. Uh, we'll show you some different variation of, uh, of uh, a t-shirt. So uh, we will start first with uh, this uh, kid, uh, kid variation t-shirt. So uh, I can use um, some uh, funny decals. So here I have my decal. I can just uh, drag and drop it into the into my 2D view here, and as you can see, I can uh, now just uh, position and rotate and scale the decal whatever I want. And a uh, great thing that we did for the decal is that you can uh, uh, drag and drop your own input. So, uh, for example, here I can uh, just. Uh, put my custom color uh, uh, decal here, which is this uh, little cute fish right there. And as you can see, uh, it will take the shape uh, of the image and also the color, so all the speckles, we have the, the blue color of my image. Um, so now I can just simply rotate it and place it wherever I want. And maybe this guy needs a friend, so I can duplicate um, this guy here and maybe scale it down here and uh, change uh, a color with another input. Um, we have also some uh, second decal. So we call, uh, I can show you that uh, maybe if, if I want the, the second the scale of the fish. So I, call, I can just uh, click on the, on the second decal 
and it will so so guys this kind of little shiny disk uh, and so if i just um, drive it with a mask as i did uh, earlier with this kind of mask you will see that i have my uh little second scale the fish so that's a substance so i have parameters and i can for example place with the amount of uh, second here so bigger ones and uh, for example, the color of the stitches here. And uh, the great thing with Sokka is that you have uh, a color for each side. So when it's going upward, you have another color. So we, we did that too. Uh, and we can you can also drive the direction of the Sokka with uh, a custom mask too. So for example, here, if I go and, and drag and drop another decal, you will see that you will have both direction of, of the, of the Sokka. And you can, of course, uh, change the color of it to, to have nice blue here and, and this light blue there. And uh, there you go, you have your, uh, your, your fish here. And you can also use the tool of uh, Substance Painter as the, the, paint, uh, the paint brush, for example, to uh, place your circuit exactly where you want. For example, so if I stamp right there, you can see that you have uh, those kind of things you can remove them too, to, so we have uh, you have exactly what you what you want, and that uh, that shine like uh, like a real uh, real signal. So uh, I think that's it for the for the first one. I can uh, show you the other one if uh, it's possible. Yes. Uh, I can show you here another one which is uh, used a lot you know, for the, the T-shirt print execution. It's the, the eye shine uh, uh, print execution like this. So again, I just drag and drop. I can scale it wherever I want. And as you can see, that's this kind of print uh, where uh, you have this uh, reflection here. And uh, as, as earlier, you can also uh, Add your custom uh, custom images on it, so you can just drag and drop anything, and you will have um, the the print execution exactly like uh, like you want. I can drop these uh, these images, for example, which is uh, in case a substance. So this illustration where it was made in uh, Substance Designer. So I have a few parameters here, uh, like the sun size and some sparkling in the water. So it could be interesting to have some more control on the on the design, and uh, for the parameters of the decal, you can of course place with the roughness, for example, to have something more shiny here, or less shiny, and also control the the fold intensity as you can have with this kind of uh, of print execution. Um, and we have uh, another one here. Uh, which is which? Uh, uh, hey, hey, Max. Yes. Uh, so, sorry to interrupt you, Max. Uh, I yeah. was just looking at your screen. I, I'm not. I don't see it updating for me. Are Are you in Substance Painter, or is it being shown through a different application? Yeah, I'm. I'm in Substance Painter. No. Yeah, because I think we're only seeing the the shirt with the fish. Okay. Uh, so we'll. Yeah. Let's see. We just uh, stop sharing and reshare to see okay, if, it's, sure. uh, if it's going. Okay, no problem. Sorry, everyone. Little technical difficulty. We'll we'll start it back over. Okay, so there we go. You see the the gray one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All okay. good now. Thanks, Max. Sorry about that. Okay, so I will just uh, repeat just to to be sure. So uh, yeah, I was talking about the high shine uh, glossy uh, decal here. So this kind of, uh, of print execution. And uh, I was saying that you can also, of course, uh, 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 put your, your, custom, uh, your custom color on it. So uh, for example, these uh, images, if I drag and drop here, you can have uh, the, the result that you want. And uh, I was saying that this one was, uh, was a substance, so I can, uh, this illustration was, was made in system designer, so I can, 
have a control of some parameters as the, the sun size, the sparkling density here. And uh, for the decal itself, you can uh, play with the roughness, for example, to have something more shiny here or, or less, and uh, play with the, the fault intensity here that you can have in this kind of, uh, of print execution. So that's it for, for this one. And yeah, I just uh, go ahead for the last, uh, last variation here which uh, I will show you that we also provided some, some seams. So here you can see I have those red seams. And if I just uh, click on other seams that I have in Painter, uh, you can just see that in Motlink, I, I can change the, the look of the, of the seams. So it's pretty nice and pretty quick to, to reiterate on, uh, on some Hey, Max, I'm, I'm sorry again, man. It oh. looks like it, it just started freezing again. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Maybe just so real do, quick. Do you see the green one or your, your no. Okay. Yeah, it look, looks like it might be frozen. Maybe just a quick share and unshare again. We'll yep. see, see if that fixes it. Is that okay? Yeah, there we go. Sorry about okay, that. Okay, nice. <laughs> no problem. No, I, I was just saying that we also provide some uh, some seams and stitches. And in Painter, if you just so you can move them, uh, whatever you want. If you, if you click on other one, it will replace it and uh, keep the same place. So you can quickly iterate and uh, and try some uh, some different seams. And uh, we we just finish with. Some embossed here, um, uh, some embossed decal. Sorry, so that's the, the same same uh, same feature. You just you just drop your decal, and you will uh, will be able to uh, add your custom mask. For example, I can um, take this uh, substance logo here, and uh, that will emboss the T-shirt, and just uh, act uh, in the in the height and normal of the T-shirt. And you can, uh, of course, play with some uh, different uh, different parameters. For example, the sharpness of the emboss to have something more like a cushion, or or a contrary, something more more sharp. And uh, that's it for me, I think. So. All right, that's awesome, Max. Thank you so much, man. Hey, I'm sorry that I had to interrupt you a little bit I mean, with some of the yeah, freezing, I'm sorry but uh, I'm sorry yeah, yeah, no, no problem at all, though, man. It worked uh, really, really well. Okay. So, uh, yeah, again, thank you, Max. That was awesome demo, and that's really cool to see, uh, you know, the 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 level of what we can do with this with this new assets that we have from Source. And, and again, just remind everyone that 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 collection is out there and ready to ready to for you to give it a shot. So, uh, Max, if you'd like, you can go ahead and just stop sharing your screen now. Uh, so we have just one other question that we'll go into before we close out the stream. So uh, this is kind of a general question that I think uh, maybe everybody can take a little stab at. Uh, but basically, this one's asking, uh, which, uh, what is the most compatible and best rendering software uh, that works best with Substance to bring out the real characteristic of fabric as the material turns out to be a bit unrealistic? So I guess they're asking, like, what's the best renderer for working with fabrics and the Substance materials that we're showcasing? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, so anybody, you, you guys can take it. Um, honestly, I don't know. If you know uh, some rendering, um, uh, if you're a, a bit more, I mean, if rendering is a bit more easy for you, is shading too, because uh, we're only focusing on the, the texture here and not the shading. And the shader actually does a lot uh, in fabrics. So as long as you're uh, okay with shading a bit, I'd say any any rendering platform. I prefer iRev, Dirt Inside Designer, but that's that's just me, so I don't know. Yeah, and that's a that's a great point because uh, one of the things with with substance with our physically based content that we create, uh, we're basically rendering agnostic. So I mean, it depends if you're using, uh, you know, V-Ray, 
uh, Arnold, uh, Corona, Keyshot, just in, any of these range of renders, uh, you can basically work with anything. The physically based data that you're authoring in the maps uh, it will work in any of these other renderers that, that are, again, physically based. So I, I really think it doesn't really matter so much what render you're using, just as long as the materials you author are, are authored correct in, in terms of being physically based. And uh, again, you know, your environment, your lighting, everything's set up okay. But uh, Nicholas, Max, do you guys have any thoughts on that? Or I, actually, there's a there's quite a few more questions. I forgot to scroll down in the uh, in the list here that Marine sent me. So, so if no, not, oh, you can go ahead, Nicholas. No, no, no. I was just going to to add some analysis uh, to the thing. So um, I'm pretty much um, aligned with what um, we let you mentioned. So perhaps um, switch to other questions. Okay, sure. Uh, actually, Max, we, we do have several for you. Uh, I'm sorry I missed these when you had your screen share going. Uh, but it says, uh, how did you do stitching so straight and have an indent? That just, you just, I, uh, I don't I don't show that, but it's just some, just some drag and drop into the, the 2D view and it will follow the, the shape of the, of the, of the, of the cloth. So nothing to do. In fact, you just have to, to drag and drop the, the decal. Yeah, and so that's like, again, you're using the decal and then you use like the shortcut that, that automatically sets yeah. the projection. Uh, what's the yes. projection mode it sets it to? I forget. It's the, it's the planar projection. Mm, okay, yeah. And, and then the, you can choose the transform tool to move it around basically yes, to where it needs to yes, be. Yes, exactly. And you uh, maybe sometimes you have to enable the tiling to, to make the, the, the seams continuously uh, in, into your cloth. Okay, uh, great. Thanks, Max. Uh, this was another one uh, towards for you. Uh, this one's saying uh, they were just asking if you were using vector-based art uh, in the demos you were using because it's uh, since he is enlarging the image non-destructively. Uh, no, 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 no vector uh, in it. Just simple, simple uh, application of the decal right out of the bat. Okay, awesome. Uh, so another question here was uh, the end result looks amazing. That's that's cool. Uh, and they asked, have you tried creating a Terry towel that will have long threads? I was wondering the same for long thread fabrics like artificial plush fur. Can you sim simulate towel like textures? Uh, what is a Terry? A Terry what? A, a Terry towel. Uh, I, I got to be honest. I'm not really sure what it is either. <laughs> but is, I think is... it's. It, geared more towards like uh basically it's asking fabrics with long threads yeah it's, yeah that's always a hard case for texturing because that just displacement so for something that is uh more more like thread with a lot of, uh, of height um no i didn't myself because uh, yeah that's pretty pretty hard to do in a in a in, with, with texture in fact Okay, and uh, another question here is the text to mask tool in SP, is that a generator? Um, how, which, which one, the text? Of, of... Uh, yeah, it just says text to mask tool in Substance Painter. Uh, maybe they were referring to some of the, the uh, I think it was probably more some of the decals. I think one was like when you- Yeah, so some decals have, have, uh, have some custom, uh, you can type your text on it. But you can also, uh, as, as I, as I uh, was showing, just import your custom uh, custom text image and and, uh, and plug into it. But you can, of course, type uh, uh, something uh, right or uh, directly into into the decal. Okay, and uh, this this one here was a just uh, this was just asking if you could show how stitching works again. Uh, I don't know how long yeah. it would take you, but if you could just maybe you could just jump into your screen share again and show that real quick. And uh, while he's doing that, there was a couple other questions here that that was uh, referencing nodes. So oh, actually, you have it going already, um, Max. So let's 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 jump into what you have here first. Um, yeah. So uh, do we do we do. Uh... So if I search some seam here, for example, this one, I just drag and drop here. And as you can see, it's uh, now there. Just want the, the, the normal color. And uh, so as you can see, it's not tiling. So you just have to uh, enable the, 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 the repetition horizontally. And there you go. You have your, your scenes. 
just have to move it wherever you want. And uh, oh. that's it. Very awesome. Simple. Easy, easy enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. And uh, so, so Max, just uh, since this is a decal, when you do the drag and drop, is there a, do you have to hold down like control to drag and drop? It's, it's alt, drag and drop. Alt. Okay. Yeah. I always get it confused. All right. So alt, yeah. drag and drop it basically it's, will automatically apply this using the, um, well, what does, does it automatically set a projection? Yeah, it's automatically uh, make a planar projection. And if okay. you go into the UVs, you, you will have uh, the tiling disabled. So you don't have the, to worry about that. You can really uh, simply move it uh, onto your mesh. Okay, awesome. All right, so uh, these next two questions, this is actually uh, speaking about nodes. So I'm, I'm thinking this is more designer related. Um, thanks, thanks, Max, for jumping back into Painter there for us. Uh, this one was just asking, what's the best collection of nodes to make zippers? I don't know if we have anything like that already. I know there's a few uh, in Painter, right? Don't we have some um, some brushes for that? But we have some decal of uh, of zipper in uh, in Substance Source. Uh, but in, uh, in in Painter, I don't know. But you can create your height map and uh, and, and try to stem something. But we we we, we did that in, in for Substance Source, so you can. Exactly like, like I show, you can drag and drop your uh, your zipper and and, uh, and put it whatever you want. Okay, yeah. So it's a, basically another decal collection, yes. just, just like you showed with the stitch. Yes. Okay, awesome. Uh, so okay, well, this one probably really is for you, Pauline. Then, this, so this is asking, what's the difference between making a pattern using an SVG and making it using nodes? Uh, the difference is your patience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. is, do you do you really have the time to uh, create it all with shapes? I mean, I, I love doing that, so I won't judge at all. But do you have time to do that? If it's for you, you can spend all the time you want. And it might be a bit uh, heavier as a material at the end because you're, you're uh, playing around with a lot of shapes. So it may become a bit heavier if you're trying to do some um, light materials that you want to use uh, for video games, for example, or you're trying to do something like light. It's not the best way, uh, but if it's just for pure fun and trying out and just messing around with shapes, uh, I'd say go for it, honestly. Yeah, great. And then I guess also if you needed to, maybe if the, the type of shape you were building up, if, if you do it node by node, you could introduce a few procedural parameters to that, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. Yeah. I guess if you're just up for the challenge of it, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Seen, That's yeah, yeah. Just your patience and the time you have to, to put it in. Yeah. Yeah, we've showcased a couple. I think we've called it the Insanity Awards, where we've seen yeah. some people do some really amazing things where they've procedurally built. Uh, I, I remember the one guy who built, uh, it was basically like an island. There was a lake, there were sailboats. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, it was really, really awesome. So great. Well, if everybody just had. Oh, sorry. yeah, Nicholas, go ahead. Yeah. If I, if I just may add something to, to this discussion, is it's just a matter of, of, of what you want to do with it. And, um, um, and, and the kind of workflow yet that you're using, because <clears throat> if you are, as a designer, uh, working a lot with patterns and, um, and have a specific patterns that you will use um, a, a lot um, every day to create, um, um, you know, um, clothing, you know, using the same patterns that will have small variation, then it's worth perhaps to design it um, uh, using, um, uh, using nodes because there you have the most control over the possible variations. So if you want to adapt it to, to, to the substrates you're applying it to, then, uh, then you have a lot more control. If that's something that you're going to use only once, then perhaps it's, uh, it's a bit of, um, of, uh, of a horrendous task to, to, to take. But um, it really depends on, the, on how you want to set up and, 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 and the quantity of production that you want to make. Oh, very, very nice, Nicholas. Thank you for that, for that information. Uh, I think that's pretty much all the questions. I did see just one more in the chat we'll hit before we close it out. And this one was, uh, can you import large mesh count objects from ZBrush into Substance? And I, I think the, yeah, you definitely can. So basically like how heavy mesh, 
you know, like, um, like yesterday I used a mesh, it was 9 million, uh, my, excuse me, 9 million triangles. I was using that in substance painter. No issue. Max, I'm, I mean, how far have you pushed it? Do you know? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have the counts, but, uh, I never had issue with this. Uh, I can tell. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just, it's uh, enough. however, yeah, it's, yeah, it's however much you can throw at your machine. I think like, I don't, yeah. I, I, I'm pretty sure we don't have some type of special, uh, like polygon, uh, max count or anything like that. But I think it just depends substance, uh, painter especially, but most of the substance tools being GPU bound. I think it just, it's how beefy is your GPU, I would say. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, great. Uh, so, you know, I think this is going to uh, conclude our stream for today. So uh, I just want to thank everyone for joining us live and a uh, special thank you to Nicholas, Pauline and Max. It was really great to hang out with you guys uh, for this live stream. Uh, love to see the insights you guys have, and uh, also it was really cool to see the demos, Pauline and Max. Uh, and that was that was it was super inspiring. Uh, in, even for myself, you know, like I, I get to work here and I see things, but then it's 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 really special for me to see you guys work too and see, uh, you know, things that I don't normally get to see like that. So that was super inspiring. Thank you guys very much. Uh, so what I want to also say is just let everybody know about our next stream. Uh, we don't have a cool image to put up right now, but um, the next stream is going to be on July thirtieth. Uh, it's going to be 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time is when it starts, and it's going to uh, be about Substance 3D and news. So uh, we'll see what that's all about. And uh, just keep an eye on our Twitter, you know, uh, our Facebook groups, things like that, where we are constantly just updating that with information on streams like this. And uh, uh, Vincent uh, is uh, uh, yeah, working over our Twitter stream and stuff, so he'll have more info on that as, as we get closer to the stream. So again, thanks everyone. Take care, be safe, and we will see you next time. And lastly, a little special shout out to Vincent. Happy birthday, buddy. See you guys later. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wes.